Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Analytic and Tribal Impact uh, LinkedIn Live. Uh, this series is focused on uh, social advocacy. And today we have a very, very special guest um, because he's not only influential on social media and believes in its presence, but he's also the CEO of Avanti. So very warm welcome to you, Jeff. Thank, Thank you, for Tim. Glad to be here. And, uh, and Jeff, just before I ask you to introduce yourself, I mean, Jeff's got 25 years experience in enterprise software companies, worked for Accenture, Oracle and Infor, um, and has just got a wealth of experience at sort of being, a, being a senior leader. And so normally Sarah and I interview a lot of uh, subject matter experts who are you know, at the top of their game on social, but this is the first time that we've interviewed uh, a CEO, so we've got a really different perspective here. So just really excited about this um, about this interview series. Um, and Jeff, I wonder whether you could kick off by um, by just telling us a bit about you and how much you believe in the importance of social media. And just before you do, um, to everyone listening, please like uh, please say hello in the comments. Tell us where you're tuning in from, uh, and keep it interactive. And we'll ask Jeff all the difficult questions that come up in the feed as and when they come. <laughs> Well, Tim, first of all, thank you. And thank you, Sarah, for having me. I'm really pleased to be here. And I think this is a very important topic. Uh, you you uh, talked a little bit about my background, as you said, 25 years in high tech. Uh, most recently, now CEO at Avanti. We are a billion dollar software company in the IT solution space. And we actually specialize on helping to create the what we call the everywhere workplace. So we, we enable uh, service management, security and endpoint management for companies that are looking to help their organizations go uh, remote and do it safely. Uh, so when I think about social and uh, how it can help a company like Avanti and how it can help me as a leader, I've learned a lot, especially in the last two years, that you know social platforms are one of the more powerful mediums to reach customers, employees, even prospective customers who are researching you. And using social, you can project the kind of company you are uh, to the world. And it's, you know, I think we can agree it's proven that individuals and, and governments and organizations have, have used and are using social media to communicate and persuade audiences. And look, today, social is one of the first places people go to research a company, research an executive. And that's true whether it's an employee, a potential new customer, a potential new business partner that's evaluating your organization. So. Uh, people even research top line executives like myself, who you are, what you stand for. And ultimately, they make decisions based on what they learn uh, uh, about you and, and what your values are and so on. And, and they make decisions and they use social to make decisions on whether or not to connect with your organization. So I think it's never been more powerful uh, in today's business environment. It, it's so refreshing, actually, I think, to see a CEO so passionate about the topic, but understand it so deeply. Um, just before we came on, you talked a little bit about uh, your organisation's had a lot of change over the last few years. You've acquired a lot of companies. There's a, uh, an, a, you know, an amalgamation of cultures that have come together. So it would be really good if you could share a little bit about you know, the, how social, the social strategy has sort of influenced that. Yeah, Sarah, it, it's true. We, you know, starting from January 2020 to today, we've made five acquisitions and and you know, multiplied the company by 2.5 times from about uh, 800 employees to now 3,200 employees in a very short amount of time. Uh, and with all of those acquisitions comes individual cultures. And I've been part of acquisitive companies for a large portion of my career, so I have a skill set on doing integration and so on. But what's I'd say different in today's kind of business, again, business environment is uh, is the power is is shifting from organizations to individuals. We're, we're seeing it in terms of, uh, you know, the great resignation, as people are calling it. individuals really taking a hard look at where they are in their careers and where they want to be. So you take that dynamic with employees getting a lot more sort of leverage in their career choices. And then an acquisitive company creates quite a challenge. And uh, for me as a leader, one of the first things I did was uh, was survey the company on what kind of company we want to be, what, how we want to project ourselves to the marketplace and so on, and establish a set of core values that all the acquired employees could line up behind. And to your point, the role that I believe social plays in that is I have to project that with authenticity, not only internally to the company, but to the marketplace in general. Employees want to see that. They want to see that this isn't just corporate speak, that 
you know, the kind of core values we're, we're, we're establishing. And for example, our first core value is locking arms. Teamwork is intrinsic to who we are. Employees want to see that when I represent the company out into the marketplace in the world, that I'm representing a teamwork, a locking arms uh, oriented persona. Right. So being authentic socially and projecting those kinds of values, employees say, OK, this isn't a, a, co a company that's got a, a sheen to it. This is an organization that believes in what it's saying is going to is going to live the, the values that they're projecting. So, so, so Jeff, uh, you're fascinating when you're talking about the, you know, researching the core values and getting that established as a, a as a sort of a common uh, common mantra for the company. You talked about your personal values. Uh, and social media. How do you how do you blend the two with your your personal profile? Because obviously you had personal values coming into this. The research study came out with core values for Avanti. H how do you? you know, it, I imagine there wasn't a. I imagine there was alignment, but not necessarily 100% fit. How do you how do you put your own personal stamp? You know, on on your social media profile. No, that's a great point, Tim. And I and I think this question you're asking speaks to a lot of the intimidation that senior executives have to engaging in social. What you say lives forever on on the internet, right? What you project, even the the slightest comment can be uh, thrown back in your face and or or misinterpreted and so on. And it's true that is a risk. To me, the reward and the and the value of of aligning uh, again authentic set of values. Is, is far outreaches any any downside. Uh, and if you're consistent in how you do it and, and you're consistent in how you project yourself, you can do it well. Uh, yes, it is It is a, sometimes a tricky, touchy road when it relates to a, a company's mission in the marketplace, which is business oriented. And then the employees desire to project a, a, a position on, on social issues and on uh, issues that are important to them, charitable issues and so on. So, uh, you know, I actually have a team that helps me with this. Uh, uh, Sarah Marshall, my uh, head of executive communications, and Jamie Whalen, my head of social, the three of us are kind of a trifecta. And we'll often collaborate on what is the right balance between what I want to project, my core values, what the company's core values are, and what the larger employee base wants to see Ivanti project to the world. So it is not, it's not easy. I would say it, it takes balance. It takes uh, uh, you know, discipline and how you project yourself, but it can be done. And and you're right. The core values that we created from the company survey, uh, I would say are 99, if not a hundred percent aligned with my own core values. Uh, and you know, that's obviously that's the way it should be as a CEO. Uh, but then, you know, when it, get, when it comes to me sort of running the edge on a, on an issue that I think is particularly important, you know, we, we debated whether or not to comment on, on some of the, uh, the horrific issues that have occurred in the United States recently regarding uh, gun violence, right? And we debated, should we, should we take to social media on that one? That's when we chose instead on a company all hands meeting for me to make a comment to the company uh, about, you know, what's happening there and how horrifying it is to all of us. Uh, that was the way we went. So in some cases, there's a balance. Some things you project on social, some things you project just internally to the company. And if you're consistent and authentic, it can be done. Consistent, authentic, and Sarah's on actually. So Sarah says Jeff Abbott is the real deal, authentic CEO walking the talk. And it's, <laughs> is it? Thank you, Sarah. We've got lots of questions. I hope you're keeping up to date here, Tim. I, I'm struggling now because we're getting lots of uh, comments and things. So, uh, but I, just to add to that, one thing that sprang to mind when you were talking, Jeff, you're so passionate about and believing in the power of social and activating employees on social quite a lot of the time I, we often come across leaders that are a little bit resistant to that apart from they have the time question but then also it's like oh, do we really want our employees to be building their own personal brands is that the way we want to go because won't they just sort of become more famous than the brand and you know I'd, i've got to put the question to you jeff because i've heard it from a lot of leaders so what what would be your take on that I mean, that that's a that's an important point. It is. Uh, I would say my advice would be you do not want to be uh, as a company providing a platform for a wide open amplification of individual views. That's not what you're trying to accomplish as an organization. So there is a governance model you put in place. Um, again, our communications and social teams work with myself and the rest of the executive team and the employee base to decide to balance on the on the right messaging. Pride Month, for example, here in the United States, is June is Pride Month. Uh, we made a decision to uh, very aggressively uh, uh, 
project support for Pride Month uh, through social, internally. Uh, we're providing employees the opportunity to, to create videos on the reasons Pride is Pride Month and DEIB and uh, this, this social issue is important to them. Uh, then we are uh, pushing those those videos uh, out through uh, LinkedIn, and and uh, yes, they are they are reviewed. Uh, we do a, a quick check for is this a kind of an authentic presentation of a personal experience, or is it an aggressive kind of outbound message on people should think this or that, or people should act a certain way, right? That's the balance. But employees, I think, can be a, a very strong uh, advocate for your company especially as it relates to the business uh, victories you're trying to project and the competence you have as an organization. In that case, there are amplification tools where you're simply allowing your employees to take what's a published statement or victory or win, uh, et cetera, and amplify it out across their social uh, media sites. And that creates obviously a massive effect in terms of reach into the marketplace. So I think there, there are, are a variety of ways you have to be careful no way should you just wide open provide a platform and a microphone and walk away. You have to have prudent governance over what you're uh, what you're advocating for with the employees. Mm. And yeah, you know, I just wanted to point out that there's lots of supportive comments. Uh, not not any questions at the moment, so they're giving you an easy ride. Um, but uh, but <laughs> Jamie, I'm sure that'll change. <laughs> yeah, Jamie, Stephanie, uh, Adam, you're all supporting, uh, and Le and Leslie as well. Um, just uh, just supporting the, supporting the fact that you're here and just uh, echoing all of the messages that you've uh, been talking about as well. Um, I, I wanted to ask you whether you could give a few specific examples of the benefits of you personally being on social media. What 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 anecdotes or stories have you felt through having a strong CEO presence on social? Yeah, I'm happy to, Tim. So I, I'll give you a, a real quick personal story. Three kids, uh, twins just turned 20 years old, they're going into their second year of university, and then a 17 year old daughter who just graduated high school, and she's going into her first year of university. Uh, and she just was notified by the university, uh, number one, wh wh what's her dorm? And number two, here's your, your roommate. Well, guess what she instantly did when she saw <laughs> her roommate's name? She went to like three, you know, Sarah, she went to like three different social sites, found this individual, asked to connect, that individual connected, and they began researching each other is the way I put it. And she said, Dad, I'm not researching. Yes, you are. You're looking at her posts. You're looking at what she says. You're looking at, you know, what she's about and so on. And uh, she smiled. And, and, and I said to her, have you learned anything? And she said, tons. Right. So so just an example of how this this generation, my kids are of the age that they are the social media generation. Right. They came up from its from its uh, uh, infancy now to its, you know, uh, maturity and continued growth. So they understand it far better than I do. And anyway, Mia just struck a chord with me, right? Learning tons, right? So there's a, you know, what I've learned, Tim, is there a value? For example, now when I am in the process of evaluating and considering an individual for the Avanti executive team, I'm doing what Mia's doing, right? I'm essentially using the, 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 the platforms that are available to research that individual. What are their kind of core values as nearly as I can tell. What do they align to and so on? Now, you know, not, not that I'm on a hunt to find, you know, some, some reason not to bring them on board, but you get a sense for who they are and their persona and how they would fit with your culture, right? And, you know, that's been invaluable. And I think, you know, most uh, uh, search firms, it's, it's something they now provide as part of their service to their clients is let me give you a kind of a social aspect of the individual as well as a professional aspect, the resume, but also, um, kind of their persona. And in that way, I mean, imagine how powerful that is, knowing something a little bit about the individual and who they are, uh, just not by the words on their resume, but by, by the social aspect of how they present themselves. Very powerful. And that and works just, both ways, uh, doesn't it? Oh, sorry, go, on. Go, 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 go for it. So I just, no, there, I just there was a comment, I, there was a comment oh, yeah, just on. picking up. Is that is that true that you uh, were commenting on an intern's post and welcoming them to Ivanti, so you're obviously um, you're active and just at the sort of grassroots level as well, um, which is which is testament. To, I think I read that correctly, just in the yeah. in the comments quickly. So um, uh, so you obviously live and breathe it, and uh, you know it's just a, a fantastic example to bring to the fore, just to to add to what you were saying. Yeah, and Tim, but, I'll tell you, that's actually me. 
I don't have somebody sitting by and looking for spots to to make comments on my behalf. Now, my my social team will post on my behalf, uh, but it re- as it relates to making comments on other people's threads and so on, that's all me. So, and I like to do that. I like you know people, especially individual contributors, and in, in this case, an intern, understand that that they are valued and that they are respected, and they, it is good to have them on board. Again, uh, with today's environment. Uh, you really have to requalify yourself as an organization to all of your existing employees. If you're sitting back and thinking that your, you know, your team is your squad is your squad. I got news for you. It won't be for long if you're not proactively reaching out. And again, continuing to qualify yourself is a great place to work. Yeah, this is wonderful. I mean, this is, that is engagement, right? At a, at a whole new level that, that creates employee engagement. You know, that they're, they're watching, they're engaging, they're seeing what I'm doing, what I'm contributing, the value that I bring. Um, and I just think that's a huge morale boost for any employee that gets just even that like, let alone a comment, you know, that, that is just an, a major thing. And it's the little things. I love that. The point I was going to make earlier actually was when you, oh, what was the point I was going to make earlier? You're going to say that you said that works both ways evaluating yeah because ultimately people want it to be a successful fit right so you learning about them them learning about you no one wants to waste time or have an experience that doesn't fit for either of them and and i think you know this just helps to speed that up a little bit and um i just thought it was quite interesting i thought yeah no no question it does i mean Mm. of course where i sit there are resources like glassdoor that that you know that that, uh, people tend to use more often than not for frustration but i'm seeing more and more not just for avanti but other organizations powerful commentary as well but make no mistake you know uh, uh, buying decisions are made these days on just about anything 90 plus percent online right before you ever even approach the the store, you've already researched the product before you ever buy a car, you know, everything about it, right? Oh, same yeah. thing, same thing for your employer. You're going to learn everything you can about the company, what it stands for, uh, obviously the strength of the product or service, but also the executive team and, and what, you know, what is their reputation? What is their, uh, uh, you know, demonstration of their core values and so on. Any, you know, like, like never before, like, you know, no other time we've seen, and I've seen this from research from a lot of different firms, employees are evaluating their next chapter in their career as much about uh, the value system of the organization as the compensation plan, right? In fact, people will lean even more towards value of the company, the work it does, its impact on the world than comp, which I find fascinating, but also in lift, I, it, I think it's uplifting. I think it's a good thing. Mm. And, and, and Abigail um, agreed with you and said that companies have to have a soul in order to compete. And I thought that was a really, really good um, quote there. And actually, um, when I was lucky enough to be on LinkedIn Live with uh, with your colleagues, Jamie Whalen and Sal Viveros, they were talking about the business to human approach, which is which is intrinsic uh, at Avanti. And I thought that that, was, um, that that came across really, really strongly when I was chatting to them. Um, what, and I know that you've got an exec leadership team, uh, your program on social. Um, I'd love to understand what your expectations are for your exec leadership team on on social because obviously you're living and breathing it and then you know there there are clearly the sort of whole team um some of which i imagine are um you are naturals at social some of who might it might be relatively new what are your expectations as a as a, as a whole team for them yeah great question tim and you're right i have by the way i have an outstanding executive team here at avanti and uh you know as I said a while ago, I made my my hires and my selections on the team uh, based on uh, their core values, uh, as well as their experience and their confidence. So uh, when we talk about social and uh, and engaging in the process, I, I, kind of my expectation is give it a chance, be authentic, uh, you know, learn as you go. I mean, we're all kind of from the same generation. We we came up through the the advent of the high tech industry in the in the late 80s, early 90s, and have seen it obviously explode and become a very important part of today's overall business environment. Uh, but uh, as you well said just a moment ago, Tim, the you know the phenomenon of now bringing a, a personal persona uh, to to the office and 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 then projecting it through social media is is intimidating uh, for a lot of the team. For some, it's quite natural, quite easy. For others, we're learning. So my expectation is. Uh, Give this a shot. Work actively to lift our brand by using a, a social voice. 
to recognize your individual employees for their victories, to celebrate uh, company wins and customer wins, uh, to, to even to advocate for, for charities and personal interests and social initiatives that, again, align with the company's core values. Uh, and to be, again, I've said it five times, to be authentic, be who you are. That's the most important thing. And um, we're getting there. It's a, it's a journey, but we're, we're being pulled into the contemporary social world. Yeah, it's wonderful. And I think um, sometimes when when leaders start to see the value in it, you know, and the joy it can bring and the engagement it can inspire and, you know, and then you start to understand how this works. Michael's just left uh, a comment, actually said, Jeff personally welcomed me on social on my second day at the company. Um, you know, it was it was a great experience to have firsthand. Thanks for sharing that. This is great. I, this is really cool. Um, I've got a quick question for you, actually, Drev, about, you know, what, what can brands do to make it a little bit easier, do you think, to get give their employees a voice on social? Yeah, great question. Uh, I'd say first, uh, ha have a strategy. If this is something you want to be deliberate about. You want to approach it methodically. Um, including the the infrastructure you provide give your give your team and your employees tools easy to use tools that help uh, advocate and amplify your company messages the other thing the team has taught me so i'm not taking credit for these ideas this is uh, this is sarah and jamie and sal and the entire comms team at avanti gamification has been really helpful uh you know creating contests on who can amplify these messages the most and how, how far and wide can their reach get through social. Uh, the contests help contribute to, look, we're again, we're in a remote world. Um, so there are uh, many hundreds and hundreds of employees I haven't met yet because we're uh, remote and, and, and we're likely not going back to the, to the office 100%. In fact, my, uh, my principle and, uh, and policy here at Avanti is 100% employee choice on uh, being in the office, being hybrid or being full-time remote. But because we're so remote centric, these contests, this gamification, this amplification strategy through these tools helps contribute to, uh, again, uh, core values and creating a, a common, unique uh, culture to the company. So uh, that really helps. I'd also say that we, we're you know, working with key influencer, influencers to get our message out. People who like yourselves, who are experts in social, understand its power and and we provide uh white papers and videos and so on from those advocates to the employees to understand uh the, again the power and value of social and how they can engage um, I, I, i've got a question because because you're you're very very open and uh, and you're obviously a fan of social media but i find myself you know when the new things come out you know when there's you know snapchat and TikTok, and i have to learn from you know, from my nieces, for example, or from, you know, from uh, not, not, not yet my children, because they're too young, but, um, but I just have to learn from the younger generation, like how everything works. How do you maintain your, your CEO role, but just absorb all of the education um, and to be able to sort of be able to make the right judgments to permeate social media through the organization? Yeah, Tim, candidly, uh, I, <laughs> I'm not keeping up with everything. Uh, I am flanked, again, by three kids who, uh, who, who I occasionally will look over their shoulders and see what they're looking at and so on, and they'll explain it to me. Uh, <laughs> in, interestingly, what they've told me is that a, a lot of these platforms, uh, Dad, these are, you know, these are fun for a while, and then they kind of fade. They're fun for a while, and then they fade, and so on. Um, so I think there's ebb and flow to the, to the tools that are out there and the, and the platforms that are out there. I'm actually glad to see that, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, so that people aren't just kind of locked in on, on one thing, especially the younger generation, and lose their personal social skills, which is a fear. Of, I don't think that's occurring. I think that, that, that you know, as this next generation has, has kind of grown up with social, they're understanding that there is strength and power to it and fun to it and so on. But there's also value in connecting personally. I'm a little bit off your topic, but uh, I'll say this. You know, obviously my kids, my social team, my employees at large are, are keeping me educated on, on you know, uh, what is what is current and what is important and so on. Uh, and, and in so doing, we all, you know, kind of engage together in, in the right platforms and the right messaging and the, and the right use of the tools. Uh, I, I by no means am I a contemporary expert. Uh, I'm, I'm being led by, again, a, a very expert team. But I do 
to your point, I do try and understand what is the latest and greatest out there because I think, you know, the business world is crashing into social at a pretty big rate, at a pretty fast pace and understanding that it can be a net benefit and a, and a net amplifier of who you are and what you're about in the marketplace. So we're going to continue to, to do that. We're going to continue to learn and refine and learn and refine with all the different platforms in a prudent way. So, yeah. so can, I, can I just ask very quickly, were you were you tempted on Clubhouse? Was was there discussions around that when that like blew up or was that one of the the ones where you just let it kind of play out to see whether it ebbed and flowed? Yeah, I, you know, that again, those that kind of uh, burst were, were not, uh, I would say this, we're not at the tip of the spear in terms of the of, of the platforms. We're sticking to the steadies. We're sticking to those that have, uh, you know, provided a, a really reliable, predictable way to to message and to uh, reach. Uh, so we're, we're not, I would say, I could be wrong. Sarah and Jamie may say, oh, yes, we are, Jeff. We're evaluating all the time on, on, on different ideas and so on. I will just tell you this. I'm sticking to the mainstays. Mm. I, I, was, I just think from all the comments that we're getting in support of the activity that you do, Jeff, I think it's very clear that uh, you're, you sort of your presence and activity is almost, I don't know whether this is the right word, but almost gives permission for employees to be part of the conversation. And it's like, look, I'm part of the digital conversation. You can join in. But there were a lot of employees that are very scared of saying the wrong thing. They're a little bit nervous about posting something and getting into trouble. Um, so what can brands do, do you think, to sort of mitigate that risk or to give employees a bit more confidence? Yeah, it's important. And it's not, again, it's not simple or easy. I, you know, as it relates to uh, individual employees that, you know, wanting to project personal views and, and personal, you know, use their personal voice on an issue or a, a topic, uh, professional or otherwise, that should be just that, personal, right? That should be their persona and their social media of choice. But if employee wants to engage in social to help promote the company, its brand, its mission, its values, and so on, um, you know, it, I think it's a, incumbent upon the company to make that easy, to provide those push tools, to streamline the process and, and empower them. Um, and then certainly, as, as some of the comments that are coming through are demonstrating, uh, you know, encourage employees when they see company-related posts that they support, again, uh, professional, business-oriented, and or uh, social or or sort of movement-oriented uh, comment, right? Comment in the, you know, I tend to be a very positive person. I tend to stick to very positive. You will not likely find a negative post from me anywhere at any point in history. I just don't think, if you're, if you're going to engage in a conversation that's sticky and or, you know, not contentious, maybe not the right word, but uh, one where you want to play out somebody's opinion with a different point of view, that should be a personal conversation in my point of view. Mm. And, and uh, so when I talk to employees and, and we, when we push kind of a methodology on social, I'd say, you know, stick to the positives, stick to the, that w which you support, stick to, um, you know, things that are important to you. Right. And, and so on. And, and, you know, I'll say this, Sarah, Tim, I was very nervous a year ago when we, we kind of started on this path that we would have, a continuous conflict between, you know, uh, employees not not per perhaps projecting um, a company a positive message uh, or a positive support of a of of something, and instead we're having to kind of back off a, an employee who's making caustic remarks. And so it has not happened. It really hasn't. Or or I would say this: it, it, if it has, it's been very light. It's not been tremendous, tremendously uh, contentious issue. So I think employees understand. There is a, a place to, to project your own personal views. And then there's a place to get on board with the company and where we're trying to go. And our, our employees have shown amazing resolve in staying uh, focused and positive on, on the brand and the mission. So maybe we're lucky, but I think it starts with setting an example at the executive level. And if I continue to do that right, uh, uh, the employees will feel empowered and follow. Yeah, well, I, I, I think, I think from, from the comments, you're, you're, definitely, uh, you're definitely getting that right. Um, I wanted to pick up on uh, Joel's, uh, Joel Morris's question, um, your account manager on Lytica, he said, do you pre-designate a certain period of time within your busy day or week to look at your LinkedIn? Or is it just when you have five minutes to scroll, probably in, no, between, board, in between board meetings? That's a good, <laughs> I'm actually at a board meeting this week. I, right, that's a exactly. great, great point, Joel. And the way I like to, to say it is I need to spend at least, you know, 10 to 15% of my available pie chart on, on this. 
and mm -hmm. and let me kind of give you a sense for how yeah. I do that. I will I will cruise LinkedIn at least uh, at least once a day, if not once every other day. Uh, and I obviously look at the feed, look at things that I love and support, look at things that the employees are saying that I can jump in on. Look at employees who are proud to say they're here. Uh, or they're, as some of the employees have said, they're on their first day, I jump in. It's a great opportunity for me to just give them a, a punch and to be present in, in, uh, in, in their excitement. The other uh, big one is internally, we have a, a, an, a, an internal site called Avanti Everywhere. And that's you know a feed, again, a sort of a social feed where employees are commenting on what's important to them or, or new policies that they have questions about or so on. I'll jump in sometimes and answer questions that they're asking about the direction of a certain policy, whether it relates to benefits or compensation or otherwise, things that are important to them. And by doing that, I, again, kind of remove this ivory tower persona from the executive team. And I say, no, 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 I'm right there with you on the field. I'm right there, you know, uh, in your day with you. And I think they respect that. The other, and I'll just give one more example, Tim. The other is we obviously have a, an instant messaging uh, uh, feed inside the company uh, and I'll, pop in on employees when I know they've had a, a promotion or some kind of a victory, or in some cases where they've had uh, some a personal tragedy that I've been made aware of from our HR team and so things that we can support them on. I'll just let them know we're thinking about you, whatever you need, let us know. Things like that, just an individual contact. Yeah, it's a, it's a fairly important part of, a, again, my overall pie chart is making sure that I stay engaged. To me, again, I said it before, uh, executives who are, you know, kind of maintaining that, that legacy outdated ivory tower or persona and policy are going to find themselves more and more distant from their employee base. There's going to become an expectation that you are somewhat available, that you are somewhat reachable and so mm -hmm. on. And I make, I make that a personal mission of mine because I, I am requalifying myself as a leader to them all the time. That's the phrase of this call. I think, I think that's fascinating. And what you've demonstrated there, Jeff, which I, I find this is not about a CEO who's just posting on LinkedIn a couple of times a week. What you're talking about here is listening to all the insights, not just externally, but internally as well, responding. It's almost like mass personalization, but you know, you, you're there responding to events that employees experiencing, new hires, new, you know, and this, I, the requalifying yourself as the CEO and it's amazing. It's a, it's a really, it, it's really powerful. And I think that actually sums up what the CEO's role is for social really is, is to be that person, that connector. I'll say this, Sarah, as a company, we're, we're pushing it. We're not doing, uh, we're not our strategy and, and, and that's not for today, but our strategy is not to stick with status quo. We're creating a platform for it solutions. That's different. And we think, uh, we think advanced. Uh, that's hard. It's hard to take businesses that are kind of rolling along and established and doing well and, and kind of growing individually and then bring them together, uh, assimilate them into a platform and, and take it forward into the marketplace. And because it's hard, you need your, your employees to uh, believe, understand and believe the mission. And with that, they'll gain passion. And with that, you'll get maximum performance and productivity from your employees and a leadership team that listens and connects with and engages with uh, individual contributors all the way up through senior leadership in an organization are going to be more powerfully aligned to creating that passion and that performance than than uh, those that don't. So it's not just uh, to, to, to from hey Jeff's a great guy right you want to come and work for Jeff no 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 it's a deliberate a part of being a contemporary leader to me is uh, creating passion engagement and alignment. And, and as you said, you know, as I said, requalifying re yourself every day as a as a leader that people want to work with. So, so, so for a CEO that this is not natural for them, and they're just starting on that journey, what what advice would you give them? Well, like anything else, research it. Talk to talk to other executives uh, that have started it and done it. Learn a little bit about how they do it. Um, put together a team like I have of, of very uh, uh, accomplished professionals like Jamie and Sarah, in my case, that can give you coaching. And to, I mean, they look, this team will tell me the right time, uh, the right content and the and the kind of the uh, the specific messages to get out. Uh, we, now, we iterate it. I don't I don't go with uh, with everything, you know, as written. I make it Jeff. Right. I don't, I don't just. Uh, say, okay, that's good, push. Uh, you know, I edit and, and craft it for myself. And that's what I would encourage people who are uh, looking to do this. Put together that team that can help craft 
with you so that it's not, uh, you know, a huge burden on your time. Um, but I think that the executives that will be trying this for the first time, if they if they take it kind of carefully and deliberately into areas that they know that they can support and that align well with the company and the employees, they'll all of a sudden get kind of a, a fever or a passion for it to do more and more and more. And it becomes uh, a perpetual or a steamroll effect in, in, uh, in part of their business day is, is I got to make time for this. I got to continue to do this. I've got to, because they'll see the returns. There's nothing better than getting, for some of the individuals who, who commented on, on the chat, there's nothing better for, the, for them to turn around and say, hey, this made my day. Thank you. Right. Or, or this was powerful. Or you commented on an issue on LinkedIn that is so important to me. Just wanted to let you know. Right. There's a real huge personal reward for getting that kind of feedback. And likewise, uh, the, the, the other side of it. Um, so, you know, a, a new executive engaging in this is going to want to uh, create this conduit of feedback that they haven't gotten in any other way. And oh, by the way, it's simple. It's not hard. It's easy. It's streamlined. It's automated. Right. So, um, you know, there's really honestly no excuse not to to make this part of your day. Yeah, I've just been reading some of the comments as well. And it's like, you know, you're always open to learning and trying new strategies, Jeff, and, and approaches, which we appreciate. Uh, someone else has said, you know, our social media, Amanda said, so our social media team is top notch. I reached out in the past and asked for advice uh, and what's best to post. And they're always there to help support. Um, rally people under a unified mission from Abigail uh, to produce change. Amazing. Uh, very, very positive. You can feel that actually in the people that are commenting. You can feel the positivity just feeding and feeding, what, which makes for a great environment and a, a super culture. I did have one last question from me. Um, so Sal actually said it, uh, well, suggested it, and it's just prompted it in my mind. Sal said, you know, having authentic brand champions will be critical for future success. Um, so what I was going to ask is what advice, you know, would you give to a brand to, to start activating employees? Have you got any advice for that? I mean, you've touched on making it simple uh, and leading from the top. So I guess you've already kind of covered a little bit, but Sal was mentioned that. So. Yeah, I, look, employees are your first line brand ambassadors. Um, and I think collectively their, their reach on social would probably surprise an executive, right? It, it, we recently did a campaign based on a study we did on, again, the remote workforce. Uh, and, and, you know, my social team and Sal came back and said, Jeff, do you realize that the reach we created in like two months was equivalent to a Super Bowl ad for a fraction of the cost, just in terms of views, uh, of people who pushed the, the, the content forward, people who commented and so on. I was stunned, right? So uh, helping uh, companies advocate for their brands and message has a, obviously a real commercial appear, uh, appeal. But, but look, you, you've got to engage those, those first line brand ambassadors in a way that they can advocate for you. you know? mm -hmm. uh, start by taking a simple, straightforward message on who your company is and what it's about and provide the employees a way to amplify it and, and allow them to also add their own kind of commentary as or, you know, this is why I love this place. Boom. And, and send the material. Uh, just getting started with a platform and a deliberate approach, uh, opening it up to the employees. Don't, don't, it's my opinion. Don't, don't test this with a small group. That's, that's kind of the, the old school way of thinking. Don't, don't wade into this with a, a test phase and so on. Just open it up, just go for it, right? Just be wide open with your employees that there's a level of trust and comfort that they can engage in your brand strategy and in your message to the marketplace uh, and take off with you. That's just my opinion. I think, you know, um, that shows heart. It shows uh, grit and it shows a, a certain amount of, of trust uh, and loyalty to your employees. Yeah, I think I think that's an amazing point because a lot of people like to sell off small, but to open the boundaries and to just you know, drive trust throughout, I think is very, very powerful. And I'm not saying I'm without gonna, I'm, gonna I'm not saying without governance and control, by the way, obviously, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> carefully. But, but yes, yeah, yes, exactly. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I probably pushed it too far, um, but uh, <laughs> but but I do love I do love the ethos behind that, um, and I think uh, Rob McCargo did. Hey, Rob, how you doing? Um, he obviously enjoyed that comment. I I just had a very quick question. It seems like you've been on social for years and years and years. When did you feel? When did you kind of start your social journey? And and was it you know at Avanti or was it before? Well, uh, personally. Um, 
you know, as my kids would say, I'm an old man, so I love Facebook, right? Uh, <laughs> and I started Facebook, gosh, I think like 2004 or five. Uh, and it, it was just an amazing way to connect with family and old friends and high school friends and so on. Um, I love, you know, that's another thing I'll do on the weekends is make sure I, I catch up on, on Facebook and just see all the posts, all the where people are vacationing, what their, you know, their kids have accomplished things and so on. So, I, you know, I have some chops, right, with, with uh, just personal social skills. But in terms of professional, Tim, only in the last two years, really. Now, uh, uh, cruising LinkedIn, uh, long time, probably, you know, probably, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years. Um, and, and obviously, you know, it used to be very popular to uh, for people to say, hey, could you give me a little uh, positive comment on LinkedIn for my resume and so on? I think that's kind of settled down. I think people are now just, you know, uh, you know, don't need as many of those individual pushes. Their, their kind of resume speak for themselves. Uh, but for a long time, just getting used to to what LinkedIn can do. But only in the last two years have I have I realized and, and started to mature on social as a way to engage in brand strategy and, and communication strategy. What a fabulous um, progress, though, in two years. I mean, I think so. I think I've done well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the impact that that has had on culture, uh, you know, inspiring the the mergers, the acquisitions that you've you've had. Wow. That's I think that's really impressive. Um, I can I can tell you've impressed Sarah because her voice rises. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all excited. <laughs> but I think that's that's it. and that is the power I think of having a, a senior, a leader, a CEO. You know how that can cascade on the on the culture of the organisation. It's amazing. It's been wonderful, Jeff, talking to you about this. You so. too, Sarah. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, and and I just uh, obviously the Avanti everywhere and the everywhere workplace is uh, is you know is fundamental to your communication, to your and to your research, and and you know you're everywhere on social. So I, I think it's uh, you know it's uh, it's really sort of aligned with the vision and how you show up. Um, and what it's sort of taught me is that that the desire and openness that you have, plus the great team you know, has driven the whole engagement. So that's obviously a really successful model. So thank you so much for coming to speak to uh, Sarah and I. It's been you know, truly a, an honor and a pleasure to speak to you, Jeff. And um, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, the pleasure has yeah. been mine. Thank you. And all the wonderful comments as well. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and if anyone wants uh, further resources um, on our social advocacy series, please visit the Tribal Impact or Analytica's website uh, page under the resources section. Uh, and we'll see you again very soon with another social advocacy interview. Thank you again, Jeff. Cheers, Thanks, Jeff. Bye-bye.